In today's video, we are shedding old home trends to make way for a new one we've never tried before, lime wash walls. Am I doing this right? It looks like an ink blot test. Is this technique as easy and as cool as the internet says it is? Um, I hate it. I hate it. Or will I regret my life and design choices after this project? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. Friends, I think it's time for a change. And now I know what you're thinking. You're like, Sam, what is wrong with your current entryway? It looks great. And you know what? You're right. It does look great, but hear me out. There's a reason for every I promise. When I closed on this house two years ago, the first project that I tackled was this entryway. I created this really cool geometric accent wall. In fact, I'm pretty sure this was actually the first project I did in this entire house. I also took down an entire doorway and opened up our staircase. I repurposed the doorbell nook into a more functional nook, replaced the front door. I did a lot of work in this space. And while the space still looks great, it just is functioning a little differently than it did when we first moved in. So my goal for this entryway is to do a couple of super easy updates to it that are literally only going to take me pretty much a weekend to do, including but not limited to get some new storage for our shoes, which is going to totally block more of the accent wall, which makes this accent wall honestly a little obsolete. I also would like the entryway to feel like it just fits in better with the style of the house. Not that it doesn't, but now that you can see straight into the kitchen from the front door, I would like to do something a little more matchy on this back wall. So... I think you know where I'm going with this. I'm gonna try to tackle that super cool, super viral lime wash paint technique that we are seeing all over the internet right now. Have I ever done lime wash paint before? Absolutely not. Am I so excited to do lime wash paint? Absolutely yes. Is there a possibility that I might mess this up because I've never done this before? Sure is, but trying new things is super fun. So that being said, friends, we have about three days to get this project done. Let's get started. All right, friends, first step in any good makeover project is to clear out the space. So let's get started. Also, this thing is like so broken. I literally keep like an extra strap. <laughs> it just keeps falling off, like stick in the pin to pull it out. Let's see. Okay. I wasn't kidding when I said this was shoe storage. Every single one of these looks like this here. <laughs> I literally don't even know where these are going right now. Wait, like I legitimately don't know where to put these. We're getting some work done in our basement and I can't like put them in the basement. Can I put these in the basement? I will put these in the basement. This is my life. Don't come in the basement, Smoosh. You're getting work done. So like any good project, you gotta start with a fresh start. And after clearing out all these cabinets, I actually was able to donate the one that was still working to somebody on Facebook Marketplace. And all the other stuff, I kind of spread that out throughout the house, so I kept that as well. But once it was cleared out, it was time to demo. Time to demo. Okay, so before anyone gets mad at me in the comments, hear me out. I love this accent wall, but we need more storage, and that means the wall is gonna be blocked even more. So like, what's the point, you know? So I thought like, let's change it up a bit and try something new. Friends, look at this beautiful accent wall. Like really, it's so pretty. And the shoe cabinets were just blocking like all of it, which is such a shame. And the next ones I'm getting are even taller. So you're really not gonna see like any of this, which kind of sucks. So I'm a little sad to take it down because I do love it, but I know it's gonna be for good. Let's take it down, let's do it. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Now, before starting to even think about lime washing, I obviously had to take down this accent wall. And in hindsight, I'm so happy I did not use adhesive when I installed it. One down, 60 to go. From what I'm understanding, lime wash hides a bunch of imperfections in the wall, but not everything. So I did want to start with as clean of a slate as possible before getting on to even thinking about painting the wall. Unfortunately, I did run into a little bit of a snag with taking apart this wall because with every board that I pulled off the wall, the plaster from this wall just came like shooting out of the wall and crumbling everywhere. And it just caused a huge mess that I had to spend a lot of time cleaning up later. I will show you how I did that though in a little bit. Hey okay, friends, this is the worst part of this process. Scraping off all of the caulking. It's a little satisfying to wash though, isn't it? Just 
Wall is scraped. On camera, it looks pretty bad from far away. Even closer, it looks even worse. So check this out. This is rough and I could scrape for days, but it's just gonna get rougher. So here's what I'm thinking. Originally, I was just gonna patch where I needed to, but this whole wall needs to be patched. Like, let's be real. I think what I'm gonna do is go get some joint compound and put a skim coat on the entire wall. Nice and light, nothing wild. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, all done. Let's let this thing dry and we'll come back tomorrow. So see you tomorrow, friends. Bye. Friends, we are back. This wall looks great. It looks so much better. I'm gonna give this thing a light sanding, like super, super light sanding. And then we're gonna move on to priming and painting. So excited, let's do it. Every successful lime wash tutorial I've seen have started with a semi-smooth wall. So I just wanted the best chances for success here. And I just gave it a very light sanding as a base for the paint. Obviously you don't need to do this if your wall is already smooth. So I did some research and the research was, well, inconclusive. I really wanted to try to be able to just lime wash paint over this joint compound because it is a porous substance, but I couldn't find any information on whether or not that's cool. So I am gonna actually prime this wall before I start and I'm gonna be using a specific lime wash paint primer. This actually is a different brand than the lime wash I'm using, but I purchased this for a different project that I have coming up and I feel like it serves the same purpose as the other brand's primer, but this is what we're gonna use. Oh, say hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Dad's here fixing my water heater. So let's get a coat of primer on this wall. We gotta wait two hours for it to dry, and then we can start lime washing. I'm actually really nervous about lime washing, but it's gonna be fine. Whoops. <laughs> that was so neat, good job. I think I put paper on the floor. I almost wasn't gonna cover my floor. It's so weird. In researching this project, I consistently found that you're supposed to use a primer before painting with lime wash paint because it needs something porous to stick to. I wanted to be safe, so I used a lime wash specific primer, but in hindsight, I wish I also primed the fresh joint compound first because you were able to see some of the patches after the first coat. All right, now we wait. Let's go hang out with the dog and my dad for two hours. Dad, I'm gonna bother you for two hours. <laughs> he goes, why? <laughs> Okay, hey friends, moment of truth. I'm actually like a little nervous about this. I've watched so many YouTube tutorials about how to do this. I will link them in the video description for you in case I'm not doing a great enough job talking about this, but it is time for lime wash paint. I know I just used a different brand for the primer. I'm hoping that's okay. It's just what I had on hand. This is what I'm using for the actual lime wash paint. And I'm using it in a color called brush slate, which is like a darker gray almost. I've been told this stuff dries lighter than when you put it on. I've been told that it looks really bad when you first start doing it to trust the process. So let's just do it. Let's jump on in and trust the process because if I don't jump on in, I'm gonna overthink it. And you know, you know I'm very calculated and planned and organic stuff makes me a little nervous. So we're just gonna do it. All right, pop this open and see what the color looks like. Open, we gotta stir it up. A little dark, I do hope it does cure later. Blue stuff is thick. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting it to be this thick. I sampled some colors in a bedroom recently of other lime washes, and they were super thin compared to this, so see what happens, but oh. I was nervous before, but now I feel like I'm more nervous now that I see how thick this is. Now it's mixed up, I'm gonna use this brush, which is a four inch, like blocky, chunky brush. This is the brush that is recommended for lime wash, so that's what I'm using. All right, friends, without further ado, Let's get started. Oh, wish me luck. Come on, let's do it. Ready to get started, Smoosh? Let's do it. He's like, leave me alone, mom. Okay, so there were two pieces of advice that I like consistently, consistently saw online. The first was to start in a spot that's a little inconspicuous to get the hang of it. So I'm gonna start down here cause that's where the cabinet's gonna go. So if it looks bad, you won't even see it. And the second I saw was to basically just like move the <laughs> brush in these like fluid motions to make almost like clouds. And then you're gonna connect the clouds, whatever that means, let's try it. It's like 
basically just try to move the product as far as you can in one brush, like, and then like not re-up until you feel like the brush is kind of empty, so. Am I doing this right? I don't even know. So far it looks like an ink blot test. Great, we're doing great. So pretty much any tutorial I'd seen had said to do these like little cloud formations and then connect them, but also like make sure there's not a lot of product on your brush. I don't know. I've never seen clouds that look like this, but I tried my best. Um, there were a couple lessons learned also in this first coat, which I'll talk about in a little bit so you can hopefully try to avoid the mistakes that I did, but I think the first coat was okay. I don't know. At this point, I was really second guessing my choices. <laughs> I'm doing like bigger brush strokes on this side and like smaller choppy ones on that side. And I am already kind of seeing a difference. It's so subtle and you probably can't see it in the camera. This looks a little more like organic. It has some movement. That side looks a little more choppy. I don't necessarily like one more than the other, but I think I have to decide which one I'm gonna do here because otherwise it's gonna, I think, look really bad. I think I'm gonna go with some of like the more organic ones. This can be a second coat anyway and I could always make it choppier, but this is definitely harder than it looks. When you watch these YouTube tutorials, like shout out to every, you YouTube tutorial that I watched, like they were very helpful, don't get me wrong. But when you watch it sped up, it's so hard to see like the little nuances and how their hands move. And like now I totally get it. So yeah, I think we're just gonna go like a little more loosey and organic and we're gonna do working our way up. I'm gonna zoom out for a little bit and make this work. Let's do it. I'm on some TV. Oh, I gotta catch up on the Golden Bachelor. Okay. All right, friends, so right now this, it looks horrible, it looks horrible, but I've watched enough tutorials to know I have to trust the process. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm not gonna touch it anymore. Pinkies wear scouts on are not gonna touch it. It needs to dry for at least 12 hours. So tomorrow we will put a second coat on this. I'm hoping that it looks a lot better tomorrow. We're gonna stay positive. It's gonna look great tomorrow. It's gonna look great tomorrow. See you then friends, bye. Okay, friends, day two, and um, I hate it. I hate it. I know I have to trust the process here. I've watched enough of these videos to know that the first coat is gonna look bad, but there's just something about the color I'm not feeling. It doesn't look like the sample. So here's what I did today. I decided to make a custom color. So I don't know if this is okay. We're gonna find out, but I had a couple of samples of this one company's lime wash, and I decided to mix a 50-50 solution of the original color I used, plus this like, kind of like a light off white color you can kind of see it there and i got something just like a little lighter a little more variation so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna try it i don't know if it's translating on camera but it's definitely a little different it's also not as thick so i'm hoping that helps a few things i learned for the experience of trying this for the first time yesterday a couple things first is that you really have to be careful to not do vertical lines look how that dried to avoid that i'm using painter's tape now on all my edges you can see i have taped everything so that i don't have to do any vertical lines with my brushes the other thing that I kind of learned is that big strokes are better because that's where I was doing some big strokes and then like that's little choppy strokes. So like it's just like a nice velvety finish over here. I'm gonna get brave this time. I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down. We're gonna do big velvety clouds and not any vertical lines. And we're gonna see how this goes with this custom color. So wish me luck. I'm really nervous. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fine. So I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if I like broke some sort of lime wash painting rule by mixing two different brands of lime wash together, but I will say, spoiler alert, it turned out pretty dang good if I must say so myself. In fact, it kind of brought out a really cool variation in the colors a little bit when it dried, which I really loved. And also, I don't know if this is because I mixed two together or if this is just naturally what happens, but that second coat covered really well. At this point though, it was time to let everything dry overnight and the next day it was time to install my new storage cabinets. Not exactly sure what happened editing wise, but I did have a clip talking about how happy I was with the way that the second coat dried on this wall. Look how delicious it looks. But basically once it was dry, it was just time to move all of my stuff back in. And I honestly could not have been happier with the color, the way it looks. I totally get the hype 
about the lime wash paint thing. I'm so happy I jumped on this trend. Just wait until you see this space all together. It just makes so much sense. I don't necessarily consider myself trendy by any means whatsoever. I don't typically follow home improvement trends, but this is one I'm so happy that I jumped on because it just transformed the entire space. And now hear me out. You know how much I love that geometric accent wall, but I, you know that I couldn't have it anymore. So instead, I actually used my geometric headboard that I made for our last apartment and hung that up in this space as kind of like an ode to that original wall that I love so much. Admittedly, I thought this project would be way easier than it was. And there were a couple of times that I definitely doubted myself and my abilities throughout this lime wash paint process, but I trusted the process. I trusted my instincts and I'm so glad I did because look how cute this little entryway looks now. As much as I love that previous accent wall, this new one just vibes so much better with the space and the colors and it just feels cozy and yeah i'm all about it moral of the story is if you see that viral lime wash thing going around and you want to try it in your home definitely try it in your home it is so worth it but anyway i hope you all loved this video if so please make sure to subscribe to the channel click the notification bell you know i'll be back very soon with some more home improvement projects like i always am in the meantime though friends thanks so much for hanging out with me Thanks for supporting me as I transform this home and turn it into the house of my dreams. I will see you all soon with another project, but until then friends, happy DIYing.